bbc.co.uk slash six music. Uh, email from Russell on the Bill Hicks subject says, can't wait to get the Bill Hicks DVD. I saw the film at the cinema and loved it. I can believe the amount of video footage in it, especially performances of Bill doing stand-up when he was only a teenager. Uh, very, very uh, pertinent uh, as we come now to welcome the two guys behind the movie about one celebrated comic with limited archive footage and photos. They literally bring Bill Hicks to life. Uh, American Views, like the man himself, starred in it. Paul Thomas and Matt Harlock, welcome to Six Music. Hello oh, there. Very nice to be able to welcome you guys to explain a little bit about how the film came together. So uh, I suppose we should start with, had either of you ever met him or seen him? I'm getting no's so far. <laughs> Matt? Unfortunately not. Um, but Bill was one of those people who just made a massive shockwave in terms of UK comedy when um, his performance from Relentless at Montreal in 91 was broadcast here on Channel 4. Um, and it was really um, something of a, a visceral powerhouse performance that people had never really kind of seen before. Um, this guy kind of appeared fully formed and he went on to tour over here for the next two years. So that was the moment when a lot of people in the UK, including myself, became aware of him. And actually, I mean, a lot of may- is made of it in the film. And I guess because uh, you talk to his family and friends, uh, on, uh, in the film um, he really took the Brits to heart as well because I think he finally felt like he was understood he wasn't necessarily as big in the States even though he'd been touring for years uh, as he became in Britain uh, He found that the um, UK audiences seemed to have an affinity with his style of humour which was quite ironic and quite sarcastic <laughs> and um, one of the things that obviously he found in the States which um, you know has a large amount of um, you know sort of fundamentalism um, uh, within it uh, is that they just weren't quite so into the irony um, and he found that UK audiences really clicked with that and uh, he, he loved it over here. Now, uh, you had the initial links with the Hicks family through some tribute nights, I think. Is that how it's sort of the, the, the beginnings of the film? We were lucky enough to, to have some contact with the family. We've been putting on some nights that um, we sold out immediately. We had comedians, we had some rare footage and through that we kind of got in touch with the family and told them what we were doing um, and that was kind of just the start of a, a sort of a two-year process of us sort of talking to them and then um, with Paul luckily being able to um, bring in TV commissioners and to try and start getting the project together. Uh, and so, Paul, you came in to the project as well. Uh, at what point did you realise you had enough for a feature-length film and that this might be something bigger than either of you had imagined? Well, it started as a TV commission. It started as a six-part idea for Channel 4 that included people like Lenny Bruce, Andy Kaufman as well. Yeah. Um, and it was when we did the interviews, really, that we really knew we had something special and that we had to change everything we were doing, basically. It's, it had to go from a TV doc onto a much, much bigger epic story. But, and we also realised that, that, that it was, this was never going to happen again. No one was going to get these 10 people to speak together in one go and it was kind of the only chance to record Bill's story properly. You've got some superb interviews with I mean, his family for starters, mum uh, and brother and sister. Uh, were they happy to talk initially? Were they? I mean because obviously they're, it, what ends up happening is they're narrating the story um, but I mean that you know they're not actors they're no. regular regular guys so I mean how easy was it to get the, the stories that you get from them? Was this a, over a length of time? Or? It took a long time just to, to get every. as Matt said it took a couple of years but once we were over there we went with a small crew just us so no additional lights no cameramen you know who need breaks and and want to work limited hours just the two of us often we would start with the camera on the floor just to get people used to talking and then bring the camera up and start recording and but really it's just a, a case of the experience of doing that and you have to spend enough time with each person to really it's, it's kind of it's, it's like a detective job i mean you go there with your set of questions but often the answers they've got are completely different things and and the trick is to spot that and run with them and and kind of just explore their memories really and uh, and to get some unique stuff i wish you did definitely now uh, we talk about sort of footage of these people talking but that's not really what we see in american is it we actually see a kind of animated version of bill's life using the footage that you you did take from the family and friends but also f- uh, the photos from his past and uh, archive footage when did you come up with the idea or how did you come up with the idea of stitching all this together using animation well, that was part of the original pitch. Uh, so when we were pitching, again, there, you have to do something special to get the attention of commissioners because we knew that Bill Hicks was something they were pitched again and again and again. Um, so it was a case of finding a different different, a different approach, really, to get, get their interest. Um, but also we knew there were hundreds of photos of Bill already. And when we went over those, saw all those, then you lay them out. They start to tell the story by themselves. But then, of course, what happens is you haven't got photographs for a lot of the things that happen. So, so you know, one of the key scenes in the film is they sneak out when they're teenagers to go down to the comedy club against their parents' permission. Yeah. Um, and there aren't photos of that. So that's when we had to evolve this technique into, 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 into building backgrounds. So you take a real photo of Bill. Sometimes you'd be adding a bit of a body double. Um, but then it's the building of that world was where it really took a leap. 
deep and and uh, and every wherever possible um it's a real location so that is bill's family home that we were able to track down that you actually had the 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 kind of made up teenagers yeah. escaping so you're from. seeing bill sneaking out of the real window and oh. you're watching a face of him obviously not in real time in real footage but it, i mean when you were looking at the photos did only leap out and you and you think oh i can use that for something that's coming later and um it was kind of a gradual process one bill was one of those people who um, seemed to have like an innate sense that um his life and the way that he lived it would be worth um a recording and so he was a diarist um he was somebody who kept lots of photographs and contact sheets from photo shoots so we had quite a lot of choices but um for some um scenes like the one paul was talking about they were very limited and what that meant was that you really have to work creatively but i think that the technique um allows bill to be back part of the story again if it was just talking heads and clips bill would kind of be conspicuous by his absence and what the the technique allows is for bill to live and breathe again within that story with his friends and family and go through the things that they did with you as an audience it's a very immersive hopefully or an immersive way of telling the story oh do you get completely completely enveloped in it it's lovely now obviously bill's music a big part of his life as well and we uh we get a sense of that through following the story of the different bands and i think there's some dvd extras around the music as well aren't there but we thought we'd play a rolling stones track now we'll get more from paul and matt about american uh, after this because sometimes he walked on stage the rolling stones so we here have have you seen your mother baby on six we'll get more from these guys after this We have Matt Harlock and Paul Thomas with us on Six Music discussing the, well, really behind the scenes of American, the uh, Bill Hicks story. Uh, and really the Rolling Stones, not a necessarily love affair for Bill Hicks, but more something that he felt... Uh, able to, to kind of bring to life on stage in a slightly different way. Well, he absolutely loved the Stones. I mean, he was uh, very much into the sort of the, the pantheon of rock and roll. He loved Keith Moon. He loved Keith Richards. And he was just very much into this idea of um, artists who were able to push themselves and to push the boundaries as, as he saw the Stones doing. But he also um, he used to channel Mick Jagger quite a lot on stage and, and loved to um, reflect on the idea that they'd just been living in this kind of like fantasy alternative universe of sort of like drugs and women and, and money for like the last 30 years. And, and he found that very amusing. Um, he was he was just somebody who loved rock and roll. Now uh, I said mentioned before uh, we played the track that there's music on the DVD uh, and uh, some of the extras are a little bit special because you've got the kind of extended um, interviews, haven't you? But you've also got uh, following the family when they came to Britain and the story of the film when it came out. <laughs> Well, um, the, the family have obviously been um, huge supporters of us and um, you know, we couldn't have obviously made the film without them. Um, they came over to the UK um, and they had um, some music which Bill had um, recorded whilst he was on the road and okay. had never um, uh, put out. So uh, we managed to um, get them um, over to Abbey Road Studios and because Bill and his brother Steve were both the biggest Beatles fans, um, it was kind of like a real dream come true and for the family kind of an emotional circle complete um, to be able to go and remaster Bill's music at Abbey Road. But the music in the film, um, is um, uh, you know, in addition to Bill's own music, was from some of the bands that you mentioned, Marblehead Johnson being one. And yeah. um, the thread of the of the the, the film, um, uh, the music through the film, is essentially Bill with his friends, and it was kind of something that they used to do creatively together. And, and it kind of really forms like a sort of a second narrative um, throughout the piece. And do you, I mean, in terms of control, I know they're very obviously they're uh, they take a keen interest uh, in people using Bill's name and the projects that come out uh, about Bill. Uh, what was it like working with them on a project this intimate? Because obviously you talk to them about interviews and then did they want to see it before it went out or were they able to hand the project over to you guys? Or We said that we were happy for them to, to see it. I mean, what you never do, you never give any kind of editorial control. So um, <laughs> Secrets but, coming out. But originally it was a six-month pr project. We thought we'd be done in six months. So we left Texas, said, you know, we'll see you in half a year. A year later, we'd only done about 15 minutes of the film. So from their point of view, you know, these two guys came over, interviewed them and then just, we just disappeared. And it's, it's three and a half years later that we finished. Uh, and what did you guys feel about letting the project go? I mean, three and a half years later, you're kind of letting the, the story it's, it's out It's so there. funny, actually, because you're the first person I've heard who's seen the extras, and it's quite a weird experience. <laughs> <laughs> but it's really nice, though, because one of the things that the um, uh, the, the film and, and about Bill is that he comes with a lot of baggage um, in terms of how people perceive him as yeah. the chain-smoking, sort of iconoclastic, um, you know, sort of uh, wearing black. Comedian. And I think what the film attempts to do is to give you a view of who he was as a person um, and how that informs his comedy. The extras um, attempt 
to take that a little bit further in terms of the family's journey because they've had to go through since Bill died in 94 a real um, kind of sea change of understanding when he died they didn't know that this was going to happen and they didn't know that his name and his material would keep getting passed on from generation to generation it yeah, so it's been a real kind of learning experience for them where they've maybe um, you know having through seen the film over the last year kind of just come to an understanding of, of how appreciated and how loved he is and that that's going to continue uh, and some that we see on the film as well on the DVD certainly is uh, the likes of Dwight Slade and Kevin Booth kind of how they channel their uh, their bill memories uh, in, in working further. Guys, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, DVD American, the Bill Hicks story uh, coming out this week. So thank you very much for joining us. Thank, thank you. you. BBC Six Music. Bill Hicks fans, if you're listening and you were listening during our American uh, chat as well with the producers behind that film. Little heads up, Rough Trade East are showing the Bill Hicks story. Uh, Wednesday, seven o'clock this Wednesday, uh, it's the Rough Trade just off uh, Brick Lane in London. Uh, They are hoping to organise a Skype chat with Bill's brother as well that evening. It's only the second screening that uh, Rough Trade have done. Uh, They did the Banksy film earlier this year and the second one will be that. American, the Bill Hicks story, if you're a fan, uh, get yourselves down there.